Hey guys, welcome back. <clears throat> I know the last tutorial was pretty big. It's because I was trying to, uh, I, I did dis, uh, like introduce the whole unit testing for Angular for the first time. So I had to go through a, how injecting uh, a module goes about and how to inject dependencies in your directive or in your service, in your test, in your spec file. So that's why it took a long time. But with this, with the directive testing, it will be a breeze, sort of. <laughs> It will be a breeze mainly because, as you can see, the directive codes are really less. They are like just what? Okay, the directive just basically has one function. That's it. I mean, you have nothing else, so the testing is much easier. Okay, so in the directive spec file, uh, I'll just copy over everything from the from the service test because there were some part where some parts are same. For example, the after each part is not same the described blocks are not same so I'm just gonna remove those okay but the injecting part is same uh, except that this is a directive uh, we do need the post service because we do the call the post service here we don't need HTTP backend um, do we need oh yeah we need some other variables which we will be discussing later on we need a controller a directive controller CTRL we need directive control. These are the things I can, like, we need for sure. Oh, sorry, we do need the post service. So the post service is there. The HTTP backend is unnecessary. The config, uh, the config is unnecessary. We don't need the config. And we need the directive control. Now, for the, the thing that's different for uh, directives is that a directive is basically an extension of an HTML attribute, right? Like, posts is a directive. This post part is a directive. I'm calling it as a directive over my in my main.html file, right? This is a directive. It's a HTML. It's like a HTML attribute, right? HTML tag. So what it's doing is it's compiling the HTML, and then of course from the HTML, it's seeing whatever uh, if it has a controller attached to it. If it has a controller, if it has a, 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 a if it's bound to a controller, then it will execute the functions of that controller, and so on and so forth. So for this we need um we need a compile function because we're going to compile our directive we are going to compile our directive which is an html and then uh, it will create let, let's just i'll just explain as we go so compile we have a compile variable needed so underscore compile uh, it's a dollar compile this is for compiling our directive now <clears throat> right, so we have dollar compile. And then we have a scope. Now, directives or controllers, they have a scope. They need to have a scope. So how do you instantiate a new scope? You basically create a new, like you basically create a child scope from a root scope. Uh, how do we how do we go about doing that? So first we need to inject the root scope. We need to inject the root scope. And then we basically, oh, sorry, the variable scope needs to be given. Scope. The variable scope needs to be declared, and scope will be basically an instantiation. Okay, so we create a root scope. We create a child from a root scope. So root scope dot dollar new will help us create a new root scope instance we create a scope instance an instance of a scope from the parent so root scope is basically the parent scope is a child so when you in, when you when you write dollar root scope dot new it basically creates it spawns a new child now you may wonder why are we needing a scope in our directive we never used scope in the first place why do we need it as a dependency injection now we use scope because for sometimes when whenever we call a function we need to forcefully uh, restart the digest call we need to forcefully update the digest call because sometimes when you're running so many functions at the same time that's a drawback of uh, jasmine by the way it's not as powerful as mocha in this case like jasmine has some bugs i would say not bugs i mean some um, cons because you, some disadvantages is that you have to sometimes forcefully update the digest uh, uh, digest cycle or uh, because angular sometimes runs out of i don't know memory or something because it basically 
gets stuck in one loop or it basically uh, tries to execute everything at the same time so when you update the digest cycle it basically forcefully you basically telling it to you know update it so and to keep track of it to watch for new changes so that's why we need the scope.digest call okay now the element we are using okay so let's just write it element let's declare the declare the variable so the element we're using is angular dot element um, posts right this is the element we're using now you want to compile that element you want to compile that element along with its scope so this is basically compiling the directive the directive is now successfully compiled and you can basically run now the directive is rendered and the functions are available for uh, for unit testing all right so uh yeah so basically we compiled it now what we have to do is we have to uh check like what are the functions in our directive the function that we have is basically just one service call nothing else there is no uh other helper functions or no other kind of functions so we can enclose this inside another function just a function that will like what we did before like vm dot on load equal function and then enclose this thing and onload and then call onload vm dot onload yeah so it's basically gonna call it so we could do that that's what we did actually we could know we already did it so yeah so we call a function now <clears throat> the function what does the function do it does it doesn't do anything of its own it basically just calls a service so it's dependent on a service now the service we already tested a service in our service file right we already tested a service in a spec file of the service now we want to mock or we want to spy on the service like we want to just make sure that the service is called we don't care what what it's doing but we just want to make sure that the service is called so how do we do that we do we spy on the service so this is just the normal default Jasmine spy. So we are spying on post service. Uh, nope, the normal one. Post service. And the function is get posts. And you expect it to return a value. Now the value is an object, right? It's a, it's a, what you called? Let's just write a dummy object, for example, var uh, re result equal, it's an array, It's a, sorry, it's not an object, it's an array of posts. So, title, lorem, body, ipsum. So, you want to have another identical one, just to make sure that it's an array dummy bod all right so <clears throat> you want you want this to be returned but then this is a service right i mean a service basically wants to do like if you want to if you if you're just gonna try expect it to return something just like that it won't because it's basically doing a an HTTP call so it needs a promise it needs to be resolved via a promise so you need to wait for the whole data to return and then you can manipulate the data so you need dollar Q library so dollar Q is is a promise library in angular so you expect the result to come after like you resolve the promise so let's inject dollar Q as well dollar Q and dollar Q and of course dollar Q equal dollar Q all right so you are spying on the get post uh, service call okay now after all of this is done you want to forcefully uh, when you whenever you always compile a directive you always have to forcefully do a digest groups to uh, a scope dot digest call you want to update the digest call afterwards and then you want the changes to cap you want the changes to take place immediately a digest call basically uh, tries to make the change to the dom immediately forcefully tries to make to the, make the changes to the dom and then the directive control which is the 
directive control is basically VM. Remember VM, the this binding over here, the controller binding? That's directive control. You can also write, you name it to VM, it's your wish. So element.controller posts. This posts is basically, this posts is basically this posts. The directive name. All right. So the this is just basically binding the this variable, the this keyword to the directive control variable. And yeah, now we can finally write about, go about, so not write about, go about writing the test. But af but before we do that, again, we have an after reach call as well, right? I know the whole configuration is very time consuming, but once you're used to it, it doesn't take time. So the post service, this after each call, we basically reset our um, spy. This is not absolutely necessary. Like you won't get errors if you just skip this part, but it's a best practice to always reset your spies. All right. So the first spec that I'm going to do is something like, remember in service, we check if the post service is registered. Here we're going to check if the template if the posts directive is properly rendered or applied if the template is properly applied so should apply template and the function what I'm gonna check is expect uh, oops expect element remember element element is this one this post directive so dot HTML dot not dot equal not dot to equal empty empty string because you want you are expecting that the HTML is returning something you can even check specifically if the if this div if this class is present or if this um, I don't know this uh, yeah you can just check if this if a class or if a element if an attribute is present all I'm just checking is if it's returning something or not I would say that's enough because if it's returning something then it's supposed to return the whole HTML all right and then another test you would want to do is Checking if your directive control, like this this thing, this variable over here, is properly defined or not, so that if you run into some errors in the in the later phases, you get to you know like check which part of the test failed, so you know which part uh, you need to investigate. So should define controller, and you expect uh, what's this stupid function? <laughs> expect the directive control dot to be defined. If it's not defined, and if it fails over here, you know something's wrong with your instantiating the controller, the directive controller. All right, so last test, we wanna check, describe, we wanna check the function on load. Okay, so we basically want to check if the onload function is working properly. What does the onload function do? What do you expect it to do? You expect it to return or fetch posts. And as usual, I want to do a done call because of course it's a service call. So it's an asynchronous call. So you, you have an asynchronous call back to it. So it's, so the done call is necessary. So here, all you expect, all you do expect is you expect that the post service dot get posts to have been called. This is like the protocol for spies. All spies, like whenever you spy on something, you expect in a particular function and you expect it to be called. So wait, you ex first you need to call the function, of course. So directive control dot on load. You call the function and then in that function you expect this to happen all right uh, oh and also every time I call a function I always make the scope dot digest call because this always you know kind of makes like if you don't do this like I said angular kind of Jasmine kind of acts Jasmine or karma uh, they act kind of haywire so that's why I kind of always want to update the digest cycle forcefully so I just call the scope dot digest call all right, 
after calling a function every time now after you expect that this post the spy has been called successfully you just make the done call you can do an additional test where you can maybe you know test if this posts array if this posts array is properly returned to like if this posts array is properly uh, fed like the data is properly assigned to the the posts array so what you could do is you could just expect directive control this is the vm remember this is the vm equivalent so dot posts dot length dot two equal two right because here the number of posts that you're returning is two so you expect the length to be two now let's check if our test is working properly fingers crossed <laughs> All right, so our onload function is working properly. Perfect. Uh, this this thing that you're seeing here is just a, a warning. It's not an error per se. It's a warning. It's saying that the, in the index.run file, the log defined, but it's never used. It's better if you pay heed to this uh, warning. Uh, kind of good for your ESLint and all. This is because ESLint is configured. If you don't want to configure it, you could just remove the module. Uh, you could just remove the ESLint dependency over here. There's an ESLint file that we have here. Here, the ESLint is uh, kind of set up. All right. So the the directive testing is done. Next up, we're going to look into controller testing. We'll be testing the post controller because that's that has the most functions. Or we could even test published controller. But like I said, it's the same thing. All of them are just calling services. And you basically do this. You, you're also here also. You're just going to do. You're just going to spy on the service calls. That's it. All right. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Give a thumbs up if you like this. And good luck.